guys, welcome back to Lily Reads. In today's video, we have my summer reading wrap up. This summer, I read a good amount of books. I honestly haven't counted how many books I read. I will post it right here. And I think it was a good amount. Let me just go in and talk about my summer reading. I think the thing I am most proud of about my summer of reading, so July, August, and most of September, is that I got to books that I let sit on my bookshelf for a really long time. When it comes to my 2024 goals, a huge goal, probably the biggest goal I had, was getting through some of the books that I bought so long ago and was so excited for, but I've just let sit there for some reason, haven't unhauled it, haven't reached for it. And I think summer I was able to eat away at that, but also at the same time, putting in some new purchases, putting in some new books. I feel like I found a good balance and a lot of just my, you know, over the years TBR, I have been eating at that. And I think I did a really good job with that the entire year, but I really did a really good job in September because when I look at all of these books I read over the summer, like none of them are flashy in like the books that everyone is reading at the current moment. None of them are books that I was just yearning to read, but I really sat down, looked at my bookshelf and got through a lot of these books. Okay, so first things first, I wanna go through and tell you all of the books that I read this summer and the ranking that I would give them. So first, I want to start with some books that I got from the library that I do not own. First things first, we have The Guest by B.A. Paris. I gave this book four out of five stars. Next, we have The Professor. I gave this book five out of five stars. Next book we have is No One Can Know. I gave this book three out of five stars. And lastly, we have You Know What You Did. I gave this book two out of five stars. Now, let's get into our stats. First things first, we have The Seven Year Slip. I gave this book two out of five stars. Donut Fall in Love. I gave this book 2.75 out of five stars. 30 Things I Love About Myself. I gave this book two out of five stars. Next book we have is Riley Sager's Home Before Dark. I gave this book two out of five stars. The next book is Deli Wed's Destiny. I gave this book three out of five stars. The next book is Accidentally Engaged. I gave this book four out of five stars. The next book we have is The Rehearsal. I gave this book 3.75 out of five stars. Next book we have is The Summer It Girl. I gave this book four out of five stars. Next book we have is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. I gave this book 3.75 out of five stars. The next book is Una Out of Order. I gave this book three out of five stars. The next book we have is Death on the Now by Agatha Christie. I gave this book four out of five stars. Next book we have is Vera Long's Unsolicited Advice for Murders by Jesse Tusitanto. I gave this book 4.5 out of 5 stars. Next book we have is Miracle Creek by Angie Kim. I give this book about 3.85 stars. Next book we have is The Beast Thing by Paul Murray. I gave this book 5 out of 5 stars. And the next book we have is Pod. I gave this book 4 out of 5 stars. Now we are going to move on to the books that I read in August. First book we have is Ghosted. I gave this book 4 out of 5 stars. The next book we have is The Bookshop of Second Chances. I gave this book four out of five stars. All My Race by Saba Tahir. I gave this book five out of five stars. This is How You Lose the Time War. I gave this book two out of five stars. The next book we have is Reprieve. I gave this book 4.5 out of five stars. Next book we have is Woman Eating. I gave this book three out of five stars. Next book we have is Hester. I gave this book three out of five stars. Another book we have is The Summer of Skinny Dipping. I gave this book three out of five stars. Next thing we have is the Off Campus series that is made up of the score, the mistake, and the deal. All together, I would give this series three out of five stars. We have Know My Name by Chanel Miller. I did not want to give this memoir a number, but I did read Know My Name by Chanel Miller. Hot Stew by Fiona Mosley. I gave this book three out of five stars. Now we are going to move on to the books that I read in September. You guys haven't heard about some of these books because this is, you know, in place of my September wrap up. So let's get into it. 
First we have You Are Not Alone. I gave this book two out of five stars. If to tell you the truth, I gave this book one out of five stars. Survivors by Jane Harper. I gave this book two out of five stars. Ordinary Hazards by Anna Bruno. I gave this book five out of five stars. Next book we have is She Is a Haunting. I gave this book two out of five stars. Next book we have is The Woman in the Library. I gave this book five out of five stars. Another book we have is I Never, I, I'll Never Tell. I gave this book five out of five stars. The next book we have is This One Sky Day by Leona Ross. I gave this book four out of five stars. Next book we have is The One by John Mars. I gave this book 3.75 out of 5 stars. Last time I saw you, I gave this book 3.5 out of 5 stars. The House at the Bottom of the Lake, I gave this book 4 out of 5 stars. Blue Ticket, I gave this book 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next book we have is People Like Her, I gave this book 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book we have is The Silent Woods, I gave this book 3 out of 5 stars. The next book we have is The Collective, I gave this book 3 out of 5 stars. The World of Kansai, I gave this book 2 out of 5 stars. Let's get into the book club. For July, August, and September, we had three books for the book club. The first book was for July, The Kiss Countdown. I gave this book five out of five stars. Next, for August, I gave The When the Vibe is Right, I gave four out of five stars. Little Kissing Between Friends, I gave this book two out of five stars. Okay, so now that I have gone through and gave you guys my ratings for all of this book let's discuss my summer reading and how I feel about the quality of these books because I went back and read some books that I purchased a couple years ago maybe some even three years ago I knew the quality was going to be up and down I am a different reader today than I was three years ago two years ago even a year ago so I'm not really upset by like the different types of quality that I was reading because that was to be expected none of these not a lot of these were new purchases but I do think of the wins I got I got some really really good wins and so I feel good about that do I think it could have been better yes and I do think often I was fighting reading slumps it was rare that I was just you know I gotta read a book so I do think reading certain books got me in a reading slump but overall I don't think my reading was all that bad I was not reading absolutely terrible books out of all the ratings you saw you guys saw I only gave one book one star and so like I just think I had an overall good time but at the same time there weren't a lot of five stars we're going to talk about my favorite books that I read over the summer and it's not really a lot I did get some surprising books in there so I just think it was all over the board but that was to be expected but I felt good about my summer of reading of course you want more wins when you're reading this many books but everything can't be a winner and I'm just happy that I got to a lot of these books so I am okay with my summer reading but I do want to go through and specifically talk about some of these books so first things first I have been saying this for two years I think I'm out of my romance era I think I am out of my romance era I think I don't want to really grab for romance but I did get a five-star romance over the summer and it is a book that a lot of other people did not enjoy but I really enjoyed the kiss countdown by Etta Easton so much so that you will see Etta Easton in the book club next year they're putting out another book but I enjoyed the kiss countdown this book is about a woman who is a party planner she is you know fake dating this guy who's an astronaut there's family issues money issues all that I just was kicking my feet up and just having such a good time with this book so I did get a romance that was a five star and that feels good because that is rare these days Another romance that really surprised me that I really, really enjoyed was the book Stock of Second Chances. So this book is about a woman who was cheated on and she is trying to reclaim her life. Her uncle left her a house and she is going to go move into this house. When she goes to move into the house, she sees this bookshop that has rare books and she decides she wants, you know, to do some business with this guy and that starts their romance. This had one of the best, like, couplings that I have read in a romance book and I really enjoyed it. There was something dark about this book that really scratched something in my brain I enjoyed this book and I was not expecting to enjoy this book let's get into my favorite books of the summer because that ain't that what you're here for so when it comes to the summer I gave out three just across the board five stars no question and I just want to start 
by discussing the bee sting by Paul Murray. I feel like such a like literary fiction girly by saying I love the bee sting. It is not, you know, unique to say that you love the bee sting, but I'm sorry, I fall into that number. The bee sting was everything to me. I know that the New York Times put out their 100 uh, best books of the 21st century or most important books of the 21st century. This book should have made that list. I don't care that it just came out. This book is so brilliant. This book is about a family that is dealing with, you know, poverty, dealing with losing their money, dealing with their family breaking apart. But at the root of it, this book is about number one, climate change and this ever changing earth that we all play a part in. And also it is about perspective. It is about viewpoints and vantage points and how we all misunderstand each other because we won't listen to each other. This book, I can, I, I, I will be singing this book's praises until I, until they put me in the ground. And when they put me in the ground, put this in there with me. I love the hell. It's a long one. It's a long one, but it's worth every single page. I want to talk to Paul Murray. I want to talk to Paul Murray and just be like, how did you do this? It is absolutely so brilliant. Definitely not only my favorite book of the summer, it's one of my favorite books ever, honestly. Another book that I really enjoyed was Ordinary Hazards by Anna Bruno. I read this book last month, so it's crazy that it's making like my best books of the summer, but I enjoyed the hell out of this book. This book is about a woman who constantly goes to this local bar and we get to know her and the people who frequent this bar over one night. And by the end of this night, something is going to happen that's going to bond these people forever. This book is so good. This book is a book about grief. This book is a book about growing up and growing into yourself and family and identity. And it works all the way through. I cannot believe that this book has been read by literally no one, only like literally like 3,000 of us in the world have read this book and I think that is so crazy because this book is so good It's so clever. It's actually funny a lot of times books are like marketed as like funny dark humor No, this book is actually genuinely funny at times and I enjoy the hell out of this book The next book is all my rage by Saba to hear this book is about two Pakistani um, ch uh, children, honestly, young adults, and them navigating being immigrants, being from immigrant families, and them also dealing with poverty and trying to make something of their life. This book, Saba Tahir, doesn't even make literary fiction, definitely not young adult literary fiction. I did not know I could enjoy young adult literary fiction, but oh my god, I did. This book is so good. It's so brilliant. Saba Tahir was willing to go there. Saba Tahir had a story to tell, and this book is worth all of the hype. I loved it. Another book that I really, really enjoyed is The Woman in the Library. Every single year, there is a book that makes my best books of the year that is like this. I It's to the point now, I need to just expect that some book on my bookshelf or that I bought is going to be kind of like this, kind of meta, kind of direct to reader, a little, you know, silly little mystery. That is what this book was. And it, like I said, it just scratched an itch in my brain. It was what I needed in the moment. It was so compelling. It gripped me from the star. I enjoyed this book. So those were my favorite books of the summer. Now we have some surprising books of the summer. Books I did not expect to enjoy as much as I did, but I did. So first we have a book that I read last month and it is I'll Never Tell. This is a young adult thriller. I know. When does Kenya read young adult thrillers? Well, I did. I read this young adult thriller and this is about a woman who is on trial in a different country because she went on vacation and they are accusing her of killing her best friend. And so we are following two timelines. We are following before when they were on vacation before the girl was killed and we are following a current timeline where she is on trial and she's in jail and all of that stuff and it's switching between just like this thriller this courtroom drama this jailhouse drama and it's just so good and the thing is it's not unpredictable it's not unpredictable it's not gonna blow your mind but to me it just worked like it was just clean there's something to be said about a book that is clean knows what it's trying to do and it worked I found myself thinking guessing and you know what I enjoyed this book and yeah I gave it five out of five stars another book that I really really enjoyed and it didn't it took until the end for me to realize that I really really enjoyed it was reprieve so in this book we start off at this like escape room 
slash haunted house and something bad is happening. Something bad is happening. Somebody is going to die. And so we go back in time and we meet all of the people who are in this that escape room when that bad thing happened. And we follow them to what leads them to the escape room. This book, just like the bee sting, is this book about perspective, this book about actually listening to people and getting to know people and how through people's sentiments and desires, they can be radicalized to do things that they would never do if they were not in a vulnerable situation. This book worked for me. This is one of the few times I have read a book and I feel like the author was ahead of their time. Like it feels like this book would come out this year because of some of the things that it like hits on a lot of the topics that we discuss online are talked about in this book and this book came out like four years ago. I enjoyed this book and it surprised me that I enjoyed it this much. The most, the most surprising book that I read this summer and enjoyed is Vera Wong's unsolicited advice for murder. So in this book, we are following an old lady named Vera Wong. One day she is going downstairs to open up her tea shop and there is a man dead in the middle of her tea shop. She does not feel like the police is taking this murder seriously. So she said she's going to investigate it herself. So she finds people who are linked to this man and she brings them into her life to figure out who murdered this man in her tea shop. This book was so much fun. This book, everyone talks about found family, found family, found family. We need found family. This book has all the found family vibes. And what Jesse Q. Satanto didn't do well in the Dow A for Auntie series is I feel like she wrote the aunties as like caricatures. There were caricatures for a certain type of women and it just didn't read well. The characters felt dumb and it felt like we were making fun of these women instead of like embracing these women for who they were. Not this book. Vera Wong is so much fun. I cannot wait for the next book to come out. Vera Wong, she is funny. She is a little silly at times, but she's also smart. She's also clever and she's also cunning it all just works and comes together and this book was so delicious so damn delicious I guessed who done it from like the 50 page mark and even that didn't deter me because I just had such a fun time being in this world with Vera Wong as long as Vera Wong books are coming out I'm gonna be there because I enjoy this book the strangest books that I read this summer but enjoy are these two this one sky day it is so funny to me when people make me question my own beliefs. I love magical realism. Magical realism is one of my favorite narrative devices. I just think it is so brilliant when done well. It's lightning in a bottle. And so this book was like, Kenya, oh, you like magical realism? Well, let me give you some magical realism on speed. This book is just nothing but magical realism. So the the root of this book is that we are on this island this caribbean island and everybody gets a magical power everyone has a magical power that is given to them some people figure out their magical abilities early some of them figure them out later but everyone has them and their magical abilities gives them their purpose on this island because whatever you're able to do you can do as like a job so for example there's a character in this book he can tell when people are lying so everyone says he should go be a police officer our main character in this book he is a chef and he has the ability he can cook whatever you need so everyone has one special meal for them he's going to cook you that one special meal he can cook everything so he is the guy everyone comes to for their one special meal well within that there's all types of things going on the biggest thing is that our chef his wife has died everyone is accusing him everyone is accusing him for her death not that he murdered her they believe that he like did something to her that made her kill herself and so he's just like y'all I didn't do nothing he's grieving her and there's this thing in their culture that when someone close to you dies before they head off to heaven or the afterlife they come back and visit you one more time and he hasn't gotten a visit so he is just traumatized and he's just grieving and he's going through so much but the big umbrella thing there's a wedding going on so the guy who is like the president of this island his 
daughter is getting married and the chef is supposed to cook the meal but he don't want to cook the meal because he's kind of over everything wife just died whatever and so we are just following these people as this wedding is happening you guys the reason why you know this book is crazy let me tell you a main plot point like the plot point that takes over this whole book everybody's vagina falls off everybody's vagina falls off just one day everybody's vagina just falls off and that just takes over the entire story dealing with the fact that nobody has a vagina anymore and like people's vaginas are running through the street literally people's vaginas are running through the street that's the magical realism going on in this book but it all just works you get on board this book is so creative and you know it's written well because you are able to just be like well that's just what it is that's when magical realism is actually magical realism and done well you get on there's rules to it but you can't explain the rules like every Everything in this didn't feel like they were grabbing things out of thin air like you get why and what's going on and so I just I just thought this book was crazy but I enjoyed it so much the next book that was a little weird but I enjoyed was a house at the bottom of the lake by Josh Malaman this book is about two kids who find a house at the bottom of the lake they become obsessed with this house they believe that the house is haunted and they go down constantly and they go visit this house this book is a horror story but at the root of it there's this idea about love and overcoming and what are you willing to risk for love and I loved it I really really did yes it was weird yes it was strange but I think this book was just so brilliantly written and I enjoy I enjoyed the hell out of it there are only three books that I deeply did not enjoy like they annoyed me that how much I didn't enjoy them and we can get on this quickly to tell you the truth by Gilly McMillan this is about a woman who is dealing with the fact that something traumatic happened to her in her childhood her brother went missing and was never found again and she's writing a book about what happened in that time so we are to believe one day her husband goes missing and people are wondering where the hell he went and does that connect her to what happened to her brother not good just simply not good bad book the next book is the seven year slip we are following a woman who has a magical apartment that her aunt left her when she goes into this apartment she sees that a man is living in her uh who is, is living in her aunt's apartment but seven years prior and so they start up this relationship in the past but she also is able to go back into the present it's just depending on what the apartment does for her I found this book to be silly I think this book is insta love that no one is talking about I think the plot is flimsy I think it has a creative idea but like I don't do well with unexplained magic and magical realism are not the same things and so when it comes to unexplained magic you're really going to have to sell me on it sell me on this idea that this is just what happens in this world and you know it's whimsy it's fun and that's not what this book was to me I think people who are enjoying this book are a little silly um yeah this one wasn't for me girl and then the last one is another Riley Sager book as long as Riley Sager I keep reading his books Riley Sager is going to show up on books I did not like Home Before Dark is about this haunted house that this woman is moving back into. She grew up in it and she does not believe it is haunted. So she's trying to get to the root why her father lied and wrote a book about a, their house being haunted when that just can't be the case because houses aren't haunted. And, you know, things start to happen. Um, no, no, this book is a mixture of a bunch of other things that you already probably enjoy, which is what Riley Sager does a lot. And it doesn't come together with a good, uh, as an actual good book. And then in the end, Riley Sager just explains to you his whole plot and be like, did you like it? Knock it off. And overall, those are my summer reading. The rest of these books, I really don't have much to say about. They're just simply here, you know, they were good reading. Some of them I'm going to keep. Some of them I'm going to get rid of and that is the good thing about this summer because I got through so many backlist books there are so many books that can finally leave my house I don't have room on my bookshelf no more to just keep books that are just like you know I didn't just love love or plan on returning to so it's good that I got through a lot of these books and I just get to you know get them out of my house send them on to a home of people who are going to enjoy there are so many people who are going to enjoy the seven year slip so why not let it go to their home there are people who are huge Riley Sager fans why not let them have that book so many books that people will enjoy and they are just not for me and I am happy to send them on to people who will anyways this is my summer wrap up thank you all for watching I'll see you guys in the next one